Let's do a deep dive into APRS Droid. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason Cam4ACK. Lately, I have been using this BTEC radio and its sister radio, the VGC, quite a bit. And although these are APRS radios, they're only about 80% there. The developers keep coming out with more and more firmware updates, but they're still not quite there yet. So what I've been doing is I've been using APRS Droid on my phone so that I get all of the true full functions of APRS. And I thought it might be worth doing a deep dive since there's been a recent fork of APRS Droid and there's being a lot of features added to it. Now, I doubt there's any way to get this all into one video because there's just so much in this application. But let's go ahead and get started today. We'll see how far we get, and then this will more than likely turn into a multi-part series. All right, so just a very quick overview of the app itself. Uh, this is the screen that you will be probably looking at when you first boot the app up. Uh, and this is the hub. If you send or receive any packets, this is the screen where you're going to see those come into. Along the top, we've got some other icons, four of them as a matter of fact. The first one that kind of looks like a clock, if we click on that, that will take you into your log file. You'll notice that that icon changed to the three lines up at the top, so clicking on that will take you back to the hub. Next up, we've got a map. If we click on that, that will bring up the current map. Now, as I'm recording this, I'm in the Florida Keys, and I have downloaded this map for offline use. I'll show you that uh, here in just a few minutes. Now, I'm going to click on the icon that's got all the little squares at the top, and that will allow me to see different time frames on the map. So right now I've just got it set to show the last 30 minutes. Now I'm going to click the uh, back arrow in the top left corner. And then the uh, next icon we've got is the messages icon. Uh, that looks like the little paper airplane. So if we click on that, any conversations, APRS messages that I was having would be in this area right here. Now I'm going to click that back arrow again. And the last thing we're going to do is touch those three dots up in the top right corner. Now the main thing that I want to go over today is all of the different settings that we've got inside of APRS Droid. So these are your preferences. That first one is just your call sign. You'll notice I've got mine in there. There's no SSID in that area. The second one down is where you set your SSID that you want to use. Typically, I use an SSID of 7 because I'm only using this over RF and with a handheld radio, uh, one of my HTs. Now, the next one down is the APRS DigiPath. If we click into that, we can set whatever path we want. Typically, you're going to use wide 1-1 and wide 2-1. Those are your typical paths that you would use, but when we were at Hamcation and doing that APRS day out, I took this out and used a path of temp 1-1. So, uh, if you do ever need a special path, you can set it right here. Now, connection preferences. Let's take a look at this real quick because this is another long list of settings here. I don't typically do connection logging. The connection protocol, I leave set to KISS TNC because I am using this with radios that have TNCs built into it. You would probably use this same setting if you were using a device like the MobiLink TNC as well. The TNC initialization string, I just leave that at default. The same for the init delay. And then the connection type right here, I set to Bluetooth SPP. If your phone only has Bluetooth low energy, you uh, might have to choose that second option instead. I don't ever use it over USB or TCP IP, so I don't uh, typically use those settings there. Now, in the Bluetooth SPP, this client mode, you always want to leave this checked. In fact, he gives you a little note there on the screen to telling you to do so. 
and then you choose your TNC Bluetooth device. Now, this is devices that are already paired to your phone. As you can see, I've got the UV Pro checked right there right now uh, because that's the particular radio that I've been using. You can also see that I've got uh, right up there at the top where I've got this paired to my TNC4. That's the MobiLink TNC4. Uh, when I'm in the truck, I've got that connected to my FTM500. So I will connect this device uh, using APRS Droid to that radio for long road trips. Uh, and then you'll see my D75 down there at the very bottom. Now, so I'm going to leave that set to UV Pro. Now, let's see. The Bluetooth channel, occasionally devices like, uh, let's say, the MobiLink TNC3 will use a different Bluetooth channel than the default. If that's the case, you would want to go ahead and click on the channel right there and set your, uh, your Bluetooth channel right here. Bluetooth settings will take you into your device's Bluetooth settings so that you can pair a radio. And then you can set the re uh, reconnect timeout. I leave mine at a default of three. So that pretty much covers that entire section. Let's go ahead and go back and let's talk about OSM maps. Right now you'll see that I've got my offline mapping enabled and then I have downloaded a map file and stored it on the, the uh, local drive here of the phone. Now we'll go into a uh, we'll go into this in more depth in another video. Uh, same for grant storage permissions. You do have to grant this app uh, all of the permissions basically in order to get it to read that file and then I always leave enable hardware accelerate uh, acceleration turned on. Now unit preferences you can uh, use Imperial or that nasty old metric system. Nah, I'm just kidding. All right, uh, whatever your preference is, set it right there. Now, digipeating. Let's take a look at that for a second because uh, let's go into the digipeating preferences. You can actually set this uh, app up, and this is one of the new features that he has baked in when he forked it. Uh, but you can set the app up to actually be a digipeater. Again, I'm going to probably need to cover this in a lot more depth in another video. But this is where all of your digipeater settings live. To enable it, uh, you just put a check mark in that uh, first box right there. And uh, then if you only want to digipeat stations that you heard direct, you would also put a check mark in that second box right there. You can set the digipeater path, the dedupe timeout, and I've never used this one, this regenerate packets. I've never even tested that, so I'm not exactly sure what that particular one is, but it says that it's dangerous, so we'll uh, leave that one alone for right now. All right, beyond digipeating um, preferences, we've also got eye gate preferences. So in addition to this just being a digipeater, you can eye gate this. So if your cell phone is in an area where you've got a mobile internet connection, you could go ahead and set up the eye gate preferences. Once again, when I get to, to the video uh, talking about digipeating, we will also cover the eye gate on this, but this is all of the different settings that you can use for your eye gate preferences. Uh, you would enable it by putting a check mark right there in the very top, and then if you wanted to suppress the traffic log, you could check that second box. But we'll go into way more detail when we get to the digipeating video. Next up, we've got message preferences. So the first option there is how many times APRS Droid will retransmit a message if it doesn't get an acknowledgement. So if you're trying to send a message, uh, it would go out right now seven times. Now, that's only seven times if it doesn't receive an acknowledgement. And I typically keep mine set uh, to seven. That way, if I'm not immediately in range of a digipeter with an eye gate on it, um, then it will go ahead and keep trying. Uh, the, the retry interval right there uh, is set. Currently, that's at 30 seconds. Now, remember that the rate does double with each retry. So it'll send the first one. It's going to wait 30 seconds and send the second one. Before the next one goes out, though, it's going to wait a full minute. So remember that it uh, the time doubles 
between each send. That next setting there is if you're going to receive a message, how often uh, is it going to send duplicate acts after a timeout period. And then we can set the timer for that right below in the next. You can choose to allow duplicate messages after the timeout period by simply putting a check mark right there. You can set the timeout right below that and you can disable message ID. Now, understand what message ID is on APRS messages. I'm not sure why you would want to disable that, but there is an option for it right there if you need to do that. Now, for position reports, these are the position reports that APRS Droid is sending out through the radio. You can use compressed beacon settings. So we've got normal compressed beacons or mic E compressed beacons. And then that last option right there is where you can set your mic E status. So whichever one you want to use, uh, do not use that last one, which is emergency unless you really, really understand what you're doing. I actually have a video to that. I'll try to remember to leave a link down in the description below if you've ever been curious as to what that emergency function is. Now, under APRS symbol, that's simply the symbol that you want to use when you are uh, sending out a beacon. You can see right down there in the bottom right that I am using the little running man. Uh, but you can choose any of the symbols that you want right here on the screen, and you'll notice that that result down there shows you exactly what it's going to be. So I'm going to change mine back to the little running guy because that's what I like to use with an HT. Now, voice frequency, if you also want to include the voice frequency that you're monitoring in the comment section of each of your packets that go out, you would go ahead and click that and enter that voice frequency right there. And then the comment field is whatever additional information you want to be in the comment when you send out your position reports. I use Winlink and AP Mail in all of my packet beacons on every single radio. By putting Winlink there, I will get an alert from the APRS system if I have any waiting Winlink messages. And the same thing for AP Mail, I will be alerted if anyone has left me a message using that system. Location settings, uh, I'll choose Smart Beaconing here but you could also choose periodic GPS or you could do manual. Smart beaconing is based on your rate of travel as to how often it's going to beacon. So if we look there under fast speed, uh, if we're at 100 kilometers per hour or more, the beacon rate is going to be 60, uh, every 60 seconds. You'll see that as uh, under the fast rate right there. Now, your slow speed uh, would be minus set currently to five kilometers per hour. And if you notice right there below that, my slow rate is 1200 seconds. Then we can set the minimum turn times, turn angle, turn slope, and there's some uh, smart beaconing help down there as the last option. But smart beaconing will adjust to your speed as to how often it's going to send a beacon out. And I find that's uh, probably the best setting to use for getting it out often enough, but also not killing your battery unnecessarily. Now, if you don't want people to see exactly where you are, you can click this position privacy. What this does is this offsets your exact location on the map and you can choose how much you want to offset it. So if we just do uh, one right there, it will offset it just a little bit, say um, maybe half a city block or so. Two will offset it a little bit more. Three and four uh, will really hide your APRS location. Typically, I'm going to leave mine set to off or I will leave mine set to one. You can choose to send your speed and bearing with each position report, and you can also choose to send your altitude. You would turn both of those on or off right here with those boxes. Now, the last ones down here are fairly straightforward. I do like to keep the screen on when I'm using APRS Droid. A lot of times I'm using this in the truck, so uh, it's always plugged into a power connection uh, for the phone. That way I can keep the screen up and see any incoming messages on the phone screen. Uh, if I'm using this with an HT and I'm walking around with it, I'll just manually turn off the screen. 
alerts for messages and position, position reports, you can set right here exactly what you want to see as different things come in. You notice I don't do anything for my own packets or digipated own packets. I don't need uh, to be alerted of that. I only want to see uh, if incoming messages. And I like that uh, blinking LED and vibration. So I'll leave both of those checked right there. And then the last two uh, settings down here are enable radio frequency control. Now that's not available for all of the different devices. I don't believe that works with the Mobilink TNC, but it does work with that BTEC radio. And right below that is where you would set the frequency that you want to use if you're choosing to use uh, frequency control with APRS Droid. All right, this video has definitely run long enough, so I will have to follow up with a few more videos in this series to cover everything that's found in APRS Droid. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.